looking at Mission Public. Wow, how much are you on your team? Um, you mean physically or yes. in, in power? So in main power we are 200 and physically we are 10. 10. Yeah. Oh wow, the person said different. No, it's okay. I mean, we, we used to be 6. Okay. 4, 6, 10. And then you go back to 10. So that's quite a lot. You, you find it? I mean, yeah, because of yeah. course, as an NGO, you yeah. need to, to have enough money to yeah. pay for 10 people, or yeah. either part time or full time. Mm. It's, so it's not that yeah. easy. Yeah. No, no. But uh, yeah, the, the thing, so we, we, you know, you, you, we are a company legally, so but we work also half of the time for uh, municipalities, for independent processes. So we oh, do okay. also public participation okay. for uh, regions, cities, and so on. Okay, so that, that, that helps, yeah. because otherwise I wouldn't... No, no, it's... Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Not well, yet. Not yet, yeah. So how is it going? Did you manage? Did you ping uh, Norberto again? Did, were you able to talk to him on Facebook? Who? Norberto, Facebook? Uh, not Norberto, but with, uh, I think with Flavia. Um, okay. And Andy uh, O'Donnell, Andy Mastoni. Andy Mastoni. And they were really interested, but they were saying, okay, why us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are poor. <laughs> so we could ask for a million. <laughs> ask a million. They are poor, yes. Yeah. So, so, this, so at some point in the discussion, said, so but how much is it? And they said, one million. And they said, oh, no, that's too much. But at the same time, they understood why it is this price, because at the beginning they had, they had understand that it's all face to face in all the countries and the logistics, the so direct yeah, costs are. Yeah. This Simply kind of traveling is yeah. like, and so and so. But they, they understood, and they were saying their point, and I found really they were really open. Said it's really interesting for us. But she was saying, but you have to to be broader in the strategic partnerships because we we can we can stop with food and fast food, and we don't want that. So you have to get um, Chinese companies, um, and India, Indian companies also on board of the strategic partnership. And then we can, we, it, it's a bit easier for us. Uh, for us so they need you to get Chinese companies in the project? They didn't take companies. They did Chinese. No, Tencent. No, they want, they want, they want to, um, to compete um, Tencent and Alibaba. They want to, to give Shifloa to make an introduction. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, Alibaba is going to be difficult. Yeah, one. but I mean, yeah. for Anyway, the, the, if yeah. the coalition is broad enough, it's the, the better for us. I think we should start, but okay. really, it's none of us. I mean, it's almost no one. Okay, but it's so maybe I was thinking, well, uh, yeah, yeah, all people are living. Oh. Most yeah. people at the coalition were living today. Yeah. Yeah. So this was one problem. Like, yes, it's yeah. maybe left in the morning because they initially they put us on the 19th. Okay, and it was. Uh, and then an error had some sort of mistake. Um, and they put us on the, uh, on the 21st. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, let's keep on. So, I wonder if we could do what we wanted to do instead <laughs> of, or do something else. Just for the sake of having a more of a better conversation, if we could all come closer because yeah. we're oh, we sit all here now. Um there's a lot to talk about. So perhaps mm -hmm. I don't know, any uh, you mean where to oh, Yeah. Okay, so I think we can try to wait like for five minutes. We start a bit later, but um, we shouldn't start too late. Perhaps we can finish this earlier on. It's like, oh no, everyone is leaving today. So people hey, have already left. Hey. So it's very few of us. Hi, Jan. Very nice to see you. It's 
I know almost everyone there. From my my fellows are all very somewhere in the in the area. And so it's a very bad day. Sorry. Yeah, me too. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, for the year. I mean, um, I might have one more meeting, but I have no more panels. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you were uh, not exactly. So this is not work for you. Well, that's that's very good. Does not work for you. So we can work. That's all. put all this load to you. <gasps> okay. <laughs> the mic seems to be on. So, yeah, um, most of us planned, uh, the session was planned initially to be on the 19th, and then it was rescheduled to the 21st. Um, no, one had, um, no one made us aware of this change, so most of us planned for the 19th. So this means that um, many of the um, members of this coalition are already somewhere in the air or in a train and cannot make it today. So um, we probably will need to... Um, reschedule a bit and do uh, and, and won't be able to do everything that we wanted to do and we had as an agenda um, so hello everyone good uh, good midday this is the very small meeting of the dynamic coalition on publicness um, we had initially um, planned this meeting to do two things um, one was to um, discuss a, a draft survey uh, we want to have a survey to um, understand how um, the different continents and different cultures think about the private space and the public space in the digitalized era. Uh, there was a small draft, drafting group that had been working on a survey for that um, that was presented to all via the mailing list. And um, within that conversation, we talked about an NGO called Mission Public. They, um, they do these sort of surveys worldwide, and they are planning to do one um, during 2018 and 2019, um, planning to present the results on 2019. And the plan from Mission Public is to do this um, on a broader scale. So um, they want to ask many questions to many different countries. They've done this for a, um, other um, conferences and events before um, and one of the members of Mission Public is here and um, so that that was the one part that we wanted to do today on the one side and on the other side we wanted to have uh, to think about a joint statement um, together with the DC agenda um, since Pushak is not is not here yet, and this is also something that we might need to uh, consider on a um, second stage when she's back, and when we um, when we get uh, a bit more of, of um, flesh into this debate, I would suggest that we concentrate first on the idea of the survey, how we feel about it. Of course, this session is not representative of what the whole group thinks because we're not all of, uh, not all of us um, are here, uh, can be here, but. Um, Perhaps we can have a very informal discussion about it. Um, and perhaps uh, Antoine uh, can present a bit what they do, and we can think about different possibilities of uh, getting this done together. Then, um, And of course, if you have other ideas and other issues that, we, that you want to discuss, we could do that as well, since um, Giotti, Giotti Pandai, who is not here anymore, she's also traveling. Um, Giotti um, sent into the mailing list also um, a hint, um, the right to be forgotten is about to be drafted uh, as a new law in India. And uh, she requested 
of the Dynamic Coalition to gather to, to produce a joint statement, and Anya Kovac, who's, um, who was not able to attend at all at the IGF, um, volunteered to send a draft into the mailing list. So this is something that we're going to um, be doing until uh, the end of January, because the deadline initially was on the 31st of December, and the government extended the deadline for feedback until the 31st um, of January. So we also have that issue on the table. So if we, if you want to discuss about this, I'm, I'm just trying to sort of moderate and uh, bring um, the whole, the yeah, a, a set or a range of topics that are interesting for us. Um, but this is a very informal gathering due to the situation that we have. Um, so please um, jump in in the debate. Um, tell me whatever you want. Uh, I mean, put in the table whatever you think should be necessary to discuss in the table. Um, and uh, if there is no um, further idea to discuss things, a part of the ones already put uh, um, exposed, then I would say um, let's concentrate on the survey because this is something that we can do very quickly. Um, you've seen the draft. Um, the idea is, as, as I said, basically to put some numbers and to put some quality into um, understanding from a very agnostic point of view how people feel about what is public and what is private now in the digitalized era and contrast it with um, the feelings they have when talking about analog situation where no digital technology is implied. So this is something very technical that needs to be done by people that are used to these surveys. And this is something where we would need um, represent, a representative um, amount of populations from a lot of countries to just make a sense. And also we would need um, people um, that are used to work on qualitative analysis, um, uh, sociologists, um, ethno ethno ethnologists, and the like, to um, have a proper interpretation about that. We are lucky to have in the um, Dynamic Coalition, Gabriela Rassano, who's, who does that for a living. Um, she works at ODAC in Africa, and she's used to do that out in Afri within the African continent. Um, but we also have here Antoine Verne, I'm sorry if I'm no, not okay. pronouncing it well. And they also do this for a living. Uh, they've been doing this with the European Spatial Agency, but also for the Climate Change Conference. And uh, perhaps you could explain yeah. a bit what you do. So hello everybody, Antoine and Carmen is here. And Carmen is going afterwards to take over because I have to add one, so Carmen will be the one responding, but here, if you look, uh, <coughs> you have too many V's. You need to lead further too? No. I will show you um, what we did in 2015. And, and so if you look at this map of the world, um, so it was on, on um, June 6, 2015, we had in uh, each of those countries, uh, 76 around the world, a group of 100 citizens. Should I talk here for, for the record? Or? Yes, please. Okay. Um, and we had in each of those countries a group of uh, 100 citizens which were ordinary citizens, so uh, recruited um, in order to be um, the most diverse and the most representative of their country. So it's not statistical representation in the term of a survey, but it's diversity. And they were so recruited that they were not knowledgeable about climate, not activists, and not engaged in um, environment. Um, and they met for a face-to-face -face meeting during a day, and they were sitting at tables of uh, six person or eight person, and they talked, they took a whole day in order to discuss um, on the topics of COP21. And the topics were defined together with the stakeholders uh, before in the year 2014 and 15. So we worked with the UN, 
Uh, we worked with the French German government, with other governments. Um, we worked with uh, the scientific committee of the IPCC in order to understand NGOs, of course, civil society and um, scientific, uh, so yeah, I said that, uh, in order to understand which were the topics that were relevant and interesting for the stakeholders, for the negotiators, in order to push policy forward. So where were they blocking and where the um, voice of the citizens could um, make the lines move and, um, and help and support the discussion. And the very important um, other key to the process is that the people we have in this room, so it starts at 9 a.m. in the Fiji, and then you go over all the countries you see. So you had uh, four groups in China, you had Russia, you had Pakistan, Afghanistan, you had 20 countries in Africa, 13 in Europe, um, and then in the Americas. Um, and for each of these groups, so it's the same protocol, they, they experience exactly the same day, and all they receive information before the day. And so how we do that is we produce information material on the topics uh, that are going to be discussed, which is balanced information. So if, um, for example, uh, here we were to talk about uh, neutrality, uh, we would say, okay, this is, a, this is net neutrality. Um, this is why people say it's uh, so critical. And this is why people say maybe we don't need it. So we always uh, put the pros and cons and the def let's say the different discourse um, and present them to the citizens. And so in order to reach also illiterate people and people that have uh, no access um, to, to reading, for example, um, we work with, in each of the countries, we have a national partner, a regional partner, and this uh, organization is in charge of organizing the debate at the regional national level. And we train them for that into the method and also into the contents. Um, and for example, in some countries in 15, like Mauritania, the information material that was produced, um, they took it, the organization, and they read it aloud and put it on chips that people could put on their phone so they could hear it. And in a country like, uh, I think it's Vietnam, they read aloud the information material on the radio. So it's how you also get to the people and uh, allow them to, have, to get this information before they, they come to the day. So what we do is not, in the sense, an opinion poll, but it's a more deliberative way of uh, getting the input of the citizens. Um, and then when we have those results, we go to the relevant arenas and places um, where people will be interested by these results. So typically IGF uh, could be a place. And now to come to uh, internet, um, we are now preparing a, a global debate like that. Uh, for 2018-19 on the future of internet. And we want to have pilots in 2018 and to have uh, the world scale debate in 2019 in order to present the result at the IGF in 2019. So this is our timeline. And um, we are welcoming uh, topics, but I think privacy is a very nice topic. We, we are scoping for topics like uh, four, six months now and a lot since uh, four days, so we have uh, we are here a lot, asking everybody, what are your topics? So what, what, do you want, what would you like uh, to hear about how the citizens feel and think, um, and which topics? And I think privacy is a, is a, is a good one. Um, so we are, yeah, this is our initiative. And uh, thank you, Lorena, for the time. And any questions, yeah, of course, uh, you have, uh, we can answer. And uh, we are happy to partner up uh, all over the world uh, with uh, this organization, person that want to, to work with us on that. Reactions in the room to that? Questions? Uh, yes, uh, so from what you have gathered here at the IGF, do you have any idea, clear idea of, of what are the topics you're going to pick out of all these conversations? So, no, because it's too much, we have to sort out, but I have a, 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 no, one general feeling uh, from my week um, now is, um, so that I have the impression that there is um, an understanding on some core principle uh, on the internet, uh, but there is a lot of ways to see how it can be implemented and achieved. And I think this is where, so this is one thing where citizens could give a lot of input, because people here are saying, okay, access, uh, but how? And then we could test, okay, how do citizens, where do citizens see the priority for access? Is it uh, technical? Do they see the technical uh, part as a, as a priority? Do they see the literacy part as a priority? So how citizens feel about that? And this would be great added value, I think, um, in terms of results. So this is the first feeling. And the second one is um, that 
um, and this was a, a, a discussion that I had um, now with, uh, talking with Vincent, and he was saying um, actually the, the, maybe the first question is to ask about this, um, do, do we want internet? Because many people would, um, would uh, take it for granted, so this is one of his uh, favorite topic, uh, but actually it's not uh, for granted, so maybe asking the citizens, starting to talk with the citizens on uh, do we want it, um, and why is it useful for us as citizens? This may be the first question if we go and talk with people that have no access or that n maybe don't. Um, because I was at a session of the NRI session before and people, many of the NRIs were saying actually the people that are not connected are also people that don't uh, see the, the added value of internet, uh, partly. So maybe this would be also a, a topic. But these are also, uh, I, I mean, only intuitions and impressions from my week here. Um, we at the Dynamic Coalition on Publicness, what we do is about the, very much about the intersection of public and private. So privacy, it's one of the, it's like topic that has to say some uh, relevance within this uh, coalition, but seen from the public perspective. Yeah. So what is it in the public space that needs to be protected, that is, uh, that has a value, that is relevant? So. Um, in, in this regard, what we, the work that we do here is more concentrated on understanding what, um, what, are the, what is the relationship to the private part, mm -hmm. but we look at privacy also from that other perspective. Mm -hmm. so, so the public space, the public value, public good, common good within uh, in the digitalized era plays a big role here. Uh, but when comment on substance with regards to and what you said about Ben Surf, um, it's, it's interesting because um, there's a lot of countries that do affordable internet. Mm. And uh, they expect then if it's affordable that people are going to go then in the internet because it's affordable, mm. right? And they did this, for instance, in Myanmar. They have this new regulation in Myanmar say, making internet affordable. And then they realized that even though it was affordable, no one was using it. So they did field research to understand why people were not using it. And what they said was, well, um, there is no content with mm. our own mo mother tongue. So, yes, it's not that they, perhaps it's not that they don't see a value, mm. but th th there's no place for them there. And um, what, um, what research um, being done by Lurnesha would say about that is that um, if you give them, um, if you explain them uh, what are the things they can do there, they do see a value, but after getting an explanation on the one side, after seeing, after having an opportunity there, so this means for them, if they, if, if, if the internet becomes a place where they can do their business, then they want to have it. If the internet becomes a place where they can use it for their own private and um, everyday life purposes, then it becomes, but it's not about wanting it or not wanting it, it's about, I think, finding out what can they do, what part of the daily lives can, can they do easier, 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 more easily there um, than than by, um, by by simply asking that question? Because I think this sort of type of question sort of um, sort of um, fogging the fact that it's only a tool to develop your own life or to manage your life or to do to, to just live with it. But it's not um, it's not. A, a thing by itself, or it's not an objective by itself having the internet. Um, so, just to come back to the to the uh, to the uh, to the point, to the hint that we're doing a lot on publicness. Do you think there is a possibility of um, putting this into your survey that you want to do, and uh, how would it go? How what would be the possibilities to have some sort of synergy for doing this? So I think, uh, of course, um, and what we are doing now, we are in the process of gathering all the topics that stakeholders are interested in, because um, I mean our goal is to be of relevance to the, the community, and to that this uh, that the the tool is used to have valuable results that you, that you can use in what you are doing, your strategy, your discussions. Um, so of course, um, 
if you share with us the, the direction it goes with uh, the questioning you have and the, the questions, we can um, see how to integrate them. The only limit is we have, yeah, as you said before, 40 to 50 questions we can ask in a day. Um, and now we are also working with qualitative and uh, more open sessions. So maybe the number of closed questions is a bit less. But what we are sure of is uh, the question that I asked, you have good answers. So it's, uh, and, and we would be happy to, yeah, to, to share the, the topic and see where they fit. So that's, uh, of course. Hi, my name's Winston Roberts. I'm from New Zealand, which doesn't appear on your map. It's a very strangely Eurocentric view of the world. So it's, yeah, the, the New Zealand partners weren't able to join, and uh, so we, we weren't, uh, so they are not green, but they were interested. Uh, we had good contacts, but uh, we, we found no partner that, that at the end was able to carry it on. And there's no, you've got Australia half covered up by some design feature as well. Okay, but it's a very, as I said, skewed view of the world. You need to focus more on the Pacific. The Pacific is where one of the, is one of the areas, it's half the planet in fact, but it's an area which has huge climate problems and it would be useful if your project could reflect that. And you also need to reflect Antarctica somehow on your map because, you know, um, although there are not populations in Antarctica that would respond to your survey, it's an area where many of the metropolitan countries in the world, including your own, um, have bases and which uh, where they do research on climate change and the impacts of climate change and the melting of ice caps and things like that. So um, it would be good if your map of the world could somehow reflect the strategic challenges more accurately. Of course, I mean it's it's a goal, and and then here for Australia we also struggled a lot to uh, to become a, to have a final partner but they weren't able to, to board in. For Antarctica, actually, we, we started to try with the French diplomatic services to understand how it could be done in Antarctica, but that was way too complicated. Um, and what we almost achieved was to do it in the European space, uh, uh, in the International Space Station. Uh, because here also you have six humans uh, that, are, that are living, and we worked with the European Space Agency in trying to have some kind of uh, replication of the debate in space, but that didn't work either because uh, you have to plan two years uh, ahead in order to send a piece of paper uh, up there. So, so this was, uh, no, but clearly we try, we want, uh, it's, it's a goal. But then when we come to the operative part, sometimes you have partners dropping off, uh, stepping in. So yes, for the Pacific, uh, we know that it was uh, underrepresented in terms of, uh, of groups. Um, okay, so uh, with that regard, if there are no more comments, I will say we just put it into the mailing list again. We hope then for more, um, we, we, we uh, request for um, additional input from the members. Um, and how would, in case of that the mailing list says, yes, we're interested in it, when does the process start and when would you be uh, requesting some sort of feedback from our side? So. So if we do a kind of uh, retro planning, um, we want to, be, to have the results for, for IGF-19. Uh, that means we would have the, the, the whole scale uh, debate um, in June or September 19. And uh, that means um, we would, would like to make the, the pilots one year before, something like June 18 or September, October 18, in order to have already some answers for IGF-18. Um, and so the, the questions, we will start drafting them um, and the first, so the first version of the question uh, that we are going to test, we would um, draft them between March and May, something like that. Or a March, June, yeah, around that. March, June. Yeah. And then of course in 19, uh, beginning of 19, we would have a second round of understanding which were the questions that really make sense, where we have to adapt, add some, um, and change some. So this is, and this is for us the first because, for example, for the climate one, we had no time for testing and piloting. So here we want to, to better a bit the quality um, of the question we can ask by, by making a pilot first. Okay, so this means after the pilot, uh, that will be that if the pilot is in September, the second one would be in somewhere in October or November. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I will forward this information into the list so that uh, the people interested in the survey can um, come back to that. Um, is there any other um, additional, I mean, if you decide that you want to do these issues, um, then you would contact us and tell us that you're interested, okay. Yeah, of course, um, and, and I mean, and we would ask uh, anyway, uh, do you want to take part? Okay. Uh, and give some input where we are, the kind of, of uh, blocks and topics we would, uh, we would have in mind, and uh, so, yeah. It, 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 is to, it has to be an open process and, and bottom-up, so, yes. Well, thank you very much for this and also for the offer. Um, and thank you for coming by and yeah, telling us about the project. Yeah. And this is really exciting and surely uh, it's, it's a chance or it could be a chance for many of us uh, at the DC Pop to understand a bit better and to perhaps find synergies with what you are doing. Um, okay, so on this topic, uh, if there is no more requests, uh, then I would say let's go into the next topic. Um, Perhaps let us um, grab the most pressing uh, issue, which is the uh, right to be forgotten in India. Do we want to address this? Uh, or should we go to the next, uh, to the other topic, which is also on the table to discuss um, the joint statement um, of the DC um, publicness and the DC on gender? Yes, please. Um, I, I can't comment on what's happening in India because it's a pity that um, we can't ask Jyoti uh, directly because she's already on the plane mm. home, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the right to be forgotten is an important topic and I'm concerned that at, at what you reported, uh, if, it's, if it's fully accurate that it, the right to be forgotten is about to be passed into law in India, is that what you said? Yes, there is a, um, a period of uh, public comments until the 31st of January. Yeah. And uh, there are different organizations that are submitting feedback and inputs. At uh, the DC Pop, we have um, people from Access Now, from, the, um, electronic, from Article 19, and uh, from other organizations also within Europe uh, that um, are willing to um, do together a joint statement, a draft statement, and submit it to, um, to the court and to the uh, Indian government, and, um, and sorry, only to the Indian government. And um, Anya Kovac, who is uh, also herself a very well-known expert uh, yeah. and a, a, law, um, a lawyer, a, um, a legal scholar that has been also working on this issue, offered to create a draft, so the draft is going to reach us within the next two weeks so that we can chime in it and uh, put our inputs in it. Uh, but perhaps there, uh, there are already some points or uh, um, uh, positions that we want to already address now, and I would just um, write them down and send them to Anya already so that she can get started a bit also on those things. So. Could I, could I add, Please. Just ask, uh, when, you, when you finished your speaking, can I just make a couple of points, sorry? Just yeah, to... please go ahead. Uh, okay, um, I would be interested to, um, to hear from uh, Anya Kovac as well, um, but we'll see those in the comments that she sends to the DC, and I'm not on this DC list, but maybe I'll give you my card later and you can put me on this list. Um, but I would like simply to put on record f from um, on represent, uh, representing here the, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, IFLA. I would like simply to put on record that the right to be forgotten is a very uh, complicated area, as the lawyers know, and there are as many arguments for privacy for human rights reasons, as there are arguments against removing um, public access to individual information from the point of view of, um, yeah, sorry. There are strong arguments for the right to be forgotten from the point of view of human rights. There are also strong arguments against it in the sense of 
maintaining the integrity of the record of uh, cultures and record of government because no information that has gone into an archive, a state archive, can ever really be strictly said to be forgotten. And even though the records were maintained in analog form, uh, they are now able to be digitized and people may request digital copies of uh, archives concerning them. Uh, it's also true that um, the, the whole business of promoting community digital access to information and promoting the information society implies that more and more people should be given more and more opportunities to get digital access to information that's relevant to them about the culture of their society and country, about the records of government that may affect them. And these, this, this digital access goes back, could go back a hundred years to old documents or longer. So, I mean, I, I'm generalizing uh, hugely here, but the question of um, not removing from cultural records uh, the names and, and the, the actual records of what were reported, uh, the actions of people that were reported, is a very complicated question. And I believe that, I, I totally understand the uh, the concerns of uh, people um, with a focus on human rights and privacy, that people should not be um, harassed and abused because um, information about them has, is brought out by search algorithms and put in a public space now. That's understandable, but coming back to what I said before, uh, the historical record must stand. It's a principle. Perhaps to, to give a sort of... Fi uh, brief background about this uh, dynamic collision. It was created um, due to the concerns on the right to be forgotten by the Costeja Gonzalez case that um, went to the ECJ, so to the European Court of Justice. So uh, that was the reason why this, collision, this dynamic collision was created, because we felt that um, there are other continents that also had some concerns about the impact of this decision. Uh, which is not only a decision, but it's also a law in the General Data Protection Regulation that is going to be implemented on May 2018. And, um, and of course, the Kurt's decision was based on the directive, um, on the Data Protection Directive, that it's still um, um, currently rolling uh, the, all the European Union member countries. Um, so, yes, uh, the this, this coalition is definitely aware that there are concerns out there. Um, and one of the concerns that were placed last year was the spillover effect that it might, had, it might have in other countries. One of them right now being Russia, uh, being, having other cases also in Latin America um, that, um, that based on this type of argumentation to demand for deleting uh, or delisting of, um, of, of um, of information and uh, these also having um, different versions of it. So the right to cancellation might be seen uh, in, in some Latin American countries might, might be seen as a derivation of the right to be forgotten because it's pretty much based on the same narrative. So yes, um, there, there is a general concern and yes, this is the nature and the reason why we're thinking about sending a joint statement to our Anya Kovac, uh, Kovac is working on a, on a draft for India. Um, and the reason, uh, the, the reason why we're here now, um, even though not all the coalition is here, would be to just say, okay, is there, is, are there any points that we want to flag to Anya for her draft before she sends it to us so that she can already consider them before um, before um, going ahead with uh, with the statement if they are if there are any any uh, points that we would like to do for instance um, on uh, the nature of how it should be used um, or um, on exceptions if there are any ideas of any type of exceptions that we want to add to that procedural comments um, um, 
questions that should be included in the joint statement, things like that. They can, they, we could do this now, and I would submit it to Anya. Um, if there are not, then I will say let's move to the next topic. Uh, yes, it's, um, I find it difficult to uh, think about points that might be left out. Uh, Anya's work in general is fantastic. She, she's an amazing uh, thinker about deep issues like the ones that are usually discussed at the IGF. If anything, um, uh, regarding some of the points that uh, have been made uh, uh, on this topic, I think the one on jurisdiction is probably the key one to understand the issue, especially considering uh, India's current state of affairs. Unfortunately, because of Jyoti's absence and, and Anya's absence, we cannot go into much detail on that. Um, but the, at least the jurisdictional side and the global impact of these orders is something that should be taken into special consideration because that's what's happening and, that, and that's what's being contested right now in Canada in, in, at the EU level because of the case in France and so on. Yeah. Kelly? You want to say something? Yeah, that, that's right. There is. Uh, there's. I don't know if you uh, are all aware. There's a new uh, decision of the highest uh, court in Spain about uh, jurisdiction, uh, because there was a Paraguay, a Paraguay, Paraguayan citizen that requested uh, the Spanish data protection supervisor to delete or to demand uh, a website in Paraguay to delete um, specific information based on the right to be forgotten. And the Audiencia Nacional, which is the highest court, decided that this does not apply because, uh, not because they don't have jurisdiction, but because the person is not a Spanish or citizen or a European Union member. Uh, but it leaves out whether they would uh, claim jurisdiction if it would be about a Spanish citizen and demanding deletion on a Paraguayan website, so that's unclear. And what is also unclear is whether um, they would demand, um, they would uh, claim to, to have jurisdiction on the case if it would be a Paraguayan citizen demanding deletion somewhere in the European Union. So uh, the question is still open. It's very unclear. And the French Data Protection Supervisor uh, Institution um, that, that has pose this question to the ECJ, it's being treated, so it's unclear what is going to happen. And indeed, I think that you're very much right. We should try to make these questions or make aware of these questions. Any other topic that we would like to flag? Well, there was also um, Bishaka from the Dynamic Coalition on Gender. And Bishaka is also from India. And uh, one of the reasons why she decided that she wanted to have a joint statement with this coalition as a sort of um, gender slash uh, publicness issue is because um, on the Gender Dynamic Coalition, they've been discussing whether this is a point where, um, where the regulator is trying to instrumentalize the case of gender uh, to get a hold uh, to, 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 so to say, to um, to, do so, to perform some sort of deletion on the, um, on the CVs and the publications around politicians. Um, so to say, to instrumentalize the right to be forgotten, um, to um, hide whether some politicians have been doing sexistic remarks or the like. Um, so the reason why Bishaka said we could do, um, we could do a joint statement was that. And there are three points that she was suggesting to make. First one, uh, I already explained that uh, women should not be, the gender issue should not be instrumentalized to make a case for the right to be forgotten as a form of um, censorship. The second point being um, that there are, um, um, that there are some myths around the idea of what the right to be forgotten is. Um, since there is already existing regulation with regards to revenge porn or any other type of, um, of situation that has a criminal um, dimension to that and what, there are already existing laws that could apply instead of applying the right to be forgotten. Uh, some laws uh, consider revenge porn part of uh, half 
um, specified regulation against revenge for in the criminal law. Um, some others have um, provisions for this type of um, of, uh, of, of crimes uh, within um, the realm of personal rights. Um, so some others do apply data protection. So all around the different world cultures, there are different provisions for that. So that was the, the second point to first um, state whether what type of law is out there um, to that could apply very directly uh, instead of in the intermediary uh, to, to uh, get a full deletion. Um, and um, the third point was about what sort of exceptions one could do if there have to be any with regards to the right to be forgotten. And that is the more sensitive part, which are, because it's really like finding the boundaries whether is there really a case for a right to be forgotten because all other regulation that applies does not have teeth. Um, and she put the example of an Italian woman. Uh, she killed herself last year. Um, and it was about um, revenge porn videos. Um, and they couldn't be deleted. So um, all the existing law, all the 16 law to um, get all those videos down didn't apply partially because of jurisdictional cases, partially because of web crawlers, so that it was pretty much um, very difficult to delete it. So she wanted to have uh, a right to be forgotten. Um, I, I don't know exactly if she applied for that, but that was one of the reasons why Bishaka thinks, well, perhaps uh, we could all get together and think about possible ways to, um, to think of exceptions, but they should be exactly that, exceptions. So those three points. First, not instrumentalizing women. Second, there are all the legal instances that can be applied before trying to think about this. And third, if there are any exceptions, what would they be? And from the perspective from the, um, from the coalition on gen from the dynamic coalition on gender, that would only be if there is no other practical way to get things deleted. Um, any comments on this? Any please reactions to that? Yes, I, I was very um, surprised when I heard about, when I read about the possible involvement of the Dynamic Coalition on Gender and Internet Governance. Um, basically because um, I have seen some approaches to the deletion of content and the delistings of content from search engine results based on ideas related to gender and the exercise of the right to identity. Um, very specifically, um, uh, on the possibilities of having the tools, and, and I think this is a key point on the second uh, issue you flagged uh, of the work with the GIG uh, Dynamic Coalition. Uh, it, it's about the, the legal tools, the remedies that a person has to remove certain kinds of content online. Those remedies are necessary uh, in many cases um, in a very quick way. And one of the reasons why uh, around the world, uh, I mean, especially in Europe, uh, the listing requests are, are made, it, it's because it's a remedy. It's a fast remedy to delete or delist or uh, take away from easy view certain kinds of content that is not um, necessarily uh, related to a um, the result, for instance, of a criminal prosecution. It's not necessarily the result of something that has been proven as um, illicit content, for instance, in the case of non-consensual pornography. So in, in, this, in this regard, I think that um, uh, I find it very relevant that the GIG is involved in this, in this topic, but I think at the same time that we need to very uh, carefully see what the, um, uh, the legal tools might and could be with regards to the deletion of content uh, well beyond the idea of criminal content, but in the case of illicit content or non-consented content that might be found online. Um, and I think that's the common ground also with some of the perspectives on, on gender uh, with relation to some uh, content that is uh, 
disseminated and that at the same time represents a form of gender violence as it happens throughout the world. Okay, no further reactions. So, um, cons well, we, we are almost close to, to end this meeting, actually, because we only have one um, hour, and it's uh, 20 past one. Uh, so, um, if there are no further comments um, noted, I will flag this into the mailing list and um, request Bishaka to react to that. Um, Perhaps we could discuss in our deadline on how to, uh, when to present this and how to launch this. Um, I guess um, this part that you're flagging, Juan Carlos, is the part that is going to take um, the longest time to agree on. Um, perhaps we could try to organize one video call because I, I don't think this is something that can be um, organized through the mailing list. This is going to lead to very lots of misunderstandings. Um, so perhaps we could try to schedule a video call uh, at the very beginnings of the year, I guess, or? Sure. Yeah? I mean, considering this, this also my lead, or my, uh, my, my, my uh, join also uh, the other statement on the right to be forgotten, uh, because this, is, this joint statement on the, of the DC pub and the DC gender also have this, uh, has this, so to say, um, occasion of the Indian government wanting to um, apply this law into their regulation. Um, it might be, it might make sense to do it very early in the year so that we can come up with something pretty fast, right? Okay, so let's try to, yes, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. It seems to me that, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but the, the problem here is you, you're struggling a little bit to find a way forward by talking maybe too much about the right to be forgotten, whereas I think that's not necessarily the issue. The issue is more how to defend people against harassment, against malicious revealing of information, which may be correct information, but which is, but but where the intent to reveal the information is illegal because it is harassment and because it is uh, defamation or something like that. So what you really need to be discussing in this, in this DC is um, strengthening the right to privacy. Sorry, I'm not a lawyer, as I say, so you can attack me on that. Expression. It has been noted, and it will definitely uh, will be flagged to uh, to Bishaka to the DC gender, um, and uh, you're very welcome to join our mailing list so that you can also follow up with a, a response from Bishaka, and you're also very welcome to join also the the video call, the conference call, so that we can all um, come to terms uh, within the month of January. Um, <coughs> Any other issues that you'd like to flag before uh, we close the session? We're coming to an end. Yes, uh, uh, um, uh, I, think, uh, I think you're absolutely right about the protection of privacy. I'm a, a person, a privacy lawyer that, I, that have become involved in this. But um, from uh, the perspective of the survey that was discussed at the very beginning of this session has to do precisely with that, like to be able to identify those instances where we value privacy. Uh, uh, but to also try to uh, sort out and, and decide and, and see what people actually think about how private certain of their actions are. Um, and it's in that space where we delineate, where we try to um, sort out the gray areas is, is where it, the work of the coalition tries to also highlight the problem of certain content that could that is not necessarily private, like the ones that it, that's not illegal content or private content or uh, secret information or irrelevant information, and the, and to uh, highlight the need to for the public information not to be lost when it is available. Uh, other groups during this IGF have also discussed the issue of, of 
to be able to find relevant content and the creation of relevant content because as we see is uh, the the internet as a tool for the dissemination of information of relevant public information uh, is a value that we need to uh, to keep well thank you very much for those remarks um so to sum up um, we, we will do three things into the mailing list. First thing, we would send, uh, we, we will give our feedback and the summary and, and summarize what was presented by Mission Public and ask the people interested in the survey whether they want to be involved in that project um, and uh, present the timeline that Mission Public has. Um, second thing, we um, will uh, flag uh, a few uh, the, the points made in the room um, for Anya on the right to be forgotten in India. And third thing, we will um, also um, drive the conversation that we started now um, with the Agenda DC and flag also the points made by Juan Carlos um, to Bishaka and hopefully schedule a meeting to make sure that uh, we get and we come to terms of to a common statement if possible within the month of January so that it can also equally be submitted to the government as part of the joint statement uh, on the right to be forgotten to um, India or, or on, on, for India. Um, so um, with this all having in mind uh, and no more um, hands being raised and comments in the room, thank you very much for all of you for staying the last minutes of this uh, IGF with us. Uh, I wish all of you safe travels and um, talk soon in the mailing list. And all others that do not belong to the mailing list, please, if you want to hear more about this, join the mailing list. You're all very welcome to. And uh, Merry Holidays. Yes. Yeah, he's, gone. he's gone? Yeah, he's gone. Where? Oh, yeah, he's nervous. Yeah. <laughs>